Hello everyone, my name is Blue Raven 666 and welcome back to Witchcraft 101. In this lesson, I will be talking about deities, what they do, how to come into contact with one, and how to work with them, as well as their place in practicing witchcraft. I hope you all had a safe and happy new year, and I hope I can help you all learn and grow in your craft in 2021. Let's get started. First off, what exactly is a deity? In broader terms, a deity is a god or a goddess, or an entity that is worshipped like a god or a goddess. They're often depicted as these powerful entities that have the ability to manipulate and influence things that happen in our world. Yahweh or Jehovah, the Christian god, is a deity. Odin, Thor, Venus, Jupiter, Ares, Zeus are all examples of a few deities that are out there. Even individuals we don't typically view as deities, like Archangels Michael and Gabriel, or demons of the Ars Goetia like Esmodeus or Astaroth, can be and are worshipped as deities. But what exactly do deities do? More importantly, why would they want to work with us? Deities actually hold the power to do a lot for us. We often hear these incredible stories from the Bible of God doing these impossible things and talking to loads of different people. And while actual deity work is nowhere near that extreme, they still hold a bit of influence in our world and are able to send us signs, messages, and subtly tweak things in ways that humanity usually doesn't notice or tends to overlook. They might do this out of their own amusement, or by the command of a witch or a pagan due to a spell, hex, or a curse. Now, plenty of skeptics will say, well, if these beings actually exist, then why can't we see them? Where are they hiding? Keep in mind that spirits, entities, they're not physical beings. They're not or are no longer of our physical world. Some might choose to remain, and that's why some of us encounter ghosts and other types of spirits, but when a deity is not doing any sort of work in our world, they reside in a place known as the Astral Plane, or the Astral Realm. All manner of deities and spirits can be found in the Astral Realm. Gods, goddesses, angels, demons, spirits, they all manage to sort of coexist in this realm similar to how us humans find ways to coexist on a tiny little rock within our universe we call Earth. Some individuals from different pantheons get along, just like some countries manage to maintain friendly relations with other countries. And some just don't like each other, for one reason or another, just the same as us. When we think about how a deity might act, we often depict them as these elegant, regal, stoic figures that are calm and take everything serious. But you'd actually be surprised at how much deities can act a lot like humans at the best of times. They have certain things they like and dislike. They have their own pet peeves, their own frustrations, things that excite them, things that they fear, and they all have their own specific brand of humor. Obviously, they know when it's time to be serious. They know when it's time to bring the hammer down. When they feel like they have to remind you that they're a deity and shouldn't be trifled with, they will remind you. But when they don't, they know how to level with us and have a good time. To a lot of people, meeting the entity that could potentially become your deity is a fascinating concept. But many aren't sure how to go about it. How do you meet a deity? How would you work with one? And how can you tell if an entity you've made contact with even is a deity at all, and not something else? A little disclaimer before I continue, you shouldn't attempt to contact or work with a deity if you're brand new to paganism and witchcraft. While yes, there are deities that are willing to work with beginners, they will reveal themselves to you in due time. Deity work as a whole is not a beginner's practice, and should only really be attempted when a witch or a pagan is experienced enough to engage. Why am I telling you this? Because a lot of things can go wrong if you try to contact a deity and don't know what you're looking for. An entity can present itself to you as a deity you've been looking to contact, but actually turn out to be a trickster spirit or a negative entity looking to latch onto you. And if it manages to do that, it might take the abilities of another, more experienced witch to remove it from you so you can start over. Don't let it happen, don't be a victim. 
Choose diligence over impatience. Now, how do you meet a deity? One of the easiest ways to go about it is by meditating. I will be making an entire video on meditation alone because there's a lot of ways to go about it, but the sole goal of meditating is to relax, clear your mind, relieve tension, and to let your stresses and the outside world fall away. When you're in this state, you are in the perfect position for entities to interact with you. Not just deities, but spirits and energies as well. You might not experience anything your first few attempts, but the more you practice meditation, the more you'll start to build your spiritual energy, and the more aware you'll become of the energies around you, and therefore, the more likely you are to sense the presence of, or actually meet a deity, when they choose to present themselves to you. Another way you could meet your deity is in a dream. Once again, when you're asleep and dreaming, your body is relaxed, the outside world has fallen away, and you're in a really good state for a deity to make contact. I like to think of dreams as bridges to the astral realm. Not all dreams are like this, of course, but when they are, it is the opportune moment for a deity to make contact with you, speak their peace, let you speak your peace, and send you back. A lot of people have asked me if daydreams are included with this. And personally, if you ask me, daydreaming or spacing out can be considered a form of meditation. So potentially, yes, it is possible for you to potentially meet a deity or hear a message from them while you are daydreaming. One other way you could meet a deity is by pure chance. Some people actually happen to see and make contact with entities a lot more easily and frequently than others, so you might not even be looking for them, but they decide it's the right time for you to see them and to start building that relationship. Working with a deity can be an exciting and enlightening experience. It's a unique form of relationship that you can find meaning in, even if you don't always see eye to eye. However, keep in mind that working with a deity is a relationship. They're not your slaves, and they don't have to bend to your will if they see no logical reason to. Remember, these beings have been around for a very long time. Every good, bad, amazing, and horrific thing to ever happen throughout the course of human history, they've seen all that, or have at least heard about it. If what you're asking for isn't necessary, or they don't stand for it, they will tell you or let you know in a way that is abundantly clear. Now, all of this doesn't mean you don't get a say in your side of the relationship. If you feel like you can't deliver upon a request, tell them that. If you aren't sure what exactly they're asking of you, ask them to elaborate. If you don't want to work with this deity at all, tell them as kindly and respectfully as you can. Overall, just keep in mind that while you have the right to say yes or no, they also have the right to say yes or no. Consent goes both ways, and it's important to communicate and respect that. So, where do deities come into play when we're practicing witchcraft? A witch can actually choose to evoke the name of his or her deity during spell work. It's almost like praying to them, in a sense. If you're worried that your own intent might not be strong enough, asking a deity for their assistance can churn out some satisfying results. In a way, the way they go about doing this is like they knock over a single domino that sets off a chain reaction of events that leads to the result you're looking for, that occurs in a discreet and realistic manner. As I mentioned earlier, working with deities is not a beginner's practice, especially for those who are younger who are just starting out. It takes a lot of time to build yourself up to that level of experience, and it leaves too much room for things to go wrong. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't some things you can do to get yourself started. Start yourself off by doing some research into the gods and goddesses of different pantheons. Just Google Norse gods, Greek gods, or Roman gods and read up on the ones that interest you, or ones you may have never even heard of. If you're fascinated by entities like Archangels, Fallen Angels, the Ars Goetia, or any spiritual entities that pique your curiosity, research them. Look up testimonials from other witches and pagans who have worked with them and watch videos about them. Literally, the internet is going to be your biggest ally here. 
Will it take time to sift through all this information? Yes, but it's time well spent. And the more things you know and learn about over time, the more prepared you'll be in the future. If you find a deity that you're drawn to, or you already have one in mind, you could try setting up an altar for them. Many deities have various colors, fragrances, animals, seasons, elements, plants, etc. that are associated with them. Or there could be certain things you already associate them with. Candles, incense, statues, crystals, offerings, and so on can be arranged on an altar as almost a sort of sanctuary or tribute to them. If and when that deity chooses to reveal themselves to you, they'll see that you are already interested in working with them, and therefore may just be a little bit more willing to work with you. Of course, this is all only optional, and if you aren't sure where to start with setting up an altar, or any of the other things I brought up, don't worry. Those will be covered in their own videos as well. The reason why I try to discourage people who are just starting on this path from working with deities is due to something that I brought up earlier. Trickster spirits. There are far more spirits surrounding us in our world and the astral realm than there are deities. And not all of these spirits are good. A trickster spirit especially is a negative entity that likes to catfish as a deity in order to attach itself to a human. They could observe you for as long as they need to to figure out which deity you're eager to work with, and then disguise themselves as said deity. And if this spirit attaches itself to you, then it could take another, more experienced witch to banish it if attempting to banish it yourself doesn't work. Now, how can you tell the difference between a deity and a trickster spirit? Typically, trickster spirits tend to want to cause more harm than good and those intentions can be very easy to pick up on. There's a sense of wrongness that comes with a trickster spirit that just tells you that they're no good at all to work with. It doesn't matter how gentle or sweet they try to be towards you, it feels wrong. A deity will always identify themselves and provide you with plenty of evidence to confirm their identity. A trickster spirit cannot do the same. So, if you come into contact with an entity claiming to be a certain deity, never just take their word for it. Always ask questions. Something that I feel like goes along the lines of this is a concept many people, mainly younger, more naive individuals, have asked me about is creating their own deity or worshipping a fictional character as a deity. You see, my belief is that it is us humans who give these entities life and power. We created them in a sense that we gave them names, wrote stories about them, and have continued to worship them throughout the centuries. So why can't the same be applied to fictional characters we desperately want to be real? Well, it's because of trickster spirits. This is already something I've heard of happening a few times from my TikTok followers and my subscribers here on YouTube. For instance, I tried to help an individual who had made a deal with a trickster spirit who had took on the guise of Dark Applier. Yes, that Dark Applier. And not too long ago, I had a fan state that they believed they had willed Alistair from Hasbin Hotel into existence because they kept hearing radio static and his voice. I'm about to break some disappointing news to you all. It is never that simple. This is something that trickster spirits love to do. They will try to take on a form that you feel a connection with, anything to draw you closer to them. Taking on a form you're familiar with, especially one you adore, is a cakewalk for them. My belief is these trickster spirits are no good power-hungry entities that crave to be worshipped like deities, and they'll pull every trick in the book to do it. I'm even skeptical of the person that told me, in detail, they met an entity that looked like an owl with very long legs, that wore a crown, and was in space. Hold on, hold on, I think I've heard this one before. <sighs> Don't trust it. It's probably a trickster spirit. That being said, I don't think it's impossible to create a deity, but I know for sure it's not going to be that easy. Okay, I know this video is super long and we've already covered a lot, so I'll wrap up this lesson here. 
Overall, if you're interested in working with deities, do your research beforehand and meditate. If you're brand new to deity work, then you're probably not ready to attempt it right out of the gate. You don't have to jump into full-blown worshipping, especially if you don't have the means to start. Start off small, and eventually you will find your deity, and start forging that bond with them. And always, be on the lookout for trickster spirits. That'll be all for this video, you guys. Thank you for tuning into this lesson. If you made it to this point of the video, you automatically get a cookie because, wow, I covered a lot of stuff in this lesson. The next lesson will be talking about spirits. I know we covered them a little bit in this video, but there's quite a bit to know about working with spirits when you are practicing witch or pagan as well. If you have any questions regarding this lesson, leave them in the comment section below. My name is Blue Raven 666 and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!